we believe in free enterprise at the Bush Institute. And we believe our economy can be more robust and therefore provide better opportunities for our citizens. We believe that one of the clearest expressions of freedom is that the aggregate demand of our citizens determine that which is produced. We believe that government uh, uh, is important, but we believe that government ought to trust the people, the collective wisdom of the people. In other words, we trust people when it comes to spending their money, and so should the government. Uh, much of the political debate, and I guess rightly so, is about our balance sheet. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. when you look at the, uh, the debt to GDP, it's pretty high. Or when you think about entitlement, uh, the, the overhang is, is, is daunting. But we believe that in order to solve the balance sheet, first and foremost, you've got to grow the private sector. And therefore, the focus ought to be on private sector growth. And that private sector growth will yield increased revenues. The pie grows. The debt relative to the pie shrinks. And with fiscal discipline, you can better solve your current account deficits and your entitlements. Uh, this year, the Bush Institute, uh, or this July, the Bush Institute is publishing a book it's got to be a staggering thing for some of the cynics up here. I publish a book, and now the Bush Institute's publishing a book. They didn't think I could read, much less write a book. <laughs> but we're publishing a book called 4% Solution. 21 experts, including five Nobel laureates, some of whom are here, have uh, provided the content on how to achieve 4% growth in the private sector. Now, look, we, we recognize this is ambitious. But most of the experts believe it's doable. I mean, and so uh, I, I hope people, I hope policymakers take time to read what the experts think. I mean, you're going to read about cutting wasteful spending or entitlement reform or immigration reform, increasing trade, energy policy, and of course what we're here to discuss today, which is pro-growth tax policy. What's the best tax policy? to grow the private sector. You notice I've been emphasizing private sector growth. I mean, the truth of the matter, if the goal was public sector growth, it'd be a short conference, <laughs> which is raise taxes. But we believe that the best policy is that which creates a robust private sector. And, uh, and so what does it mean? Well, first of all, it means that uh, an understanding of how jobs are created, who creates the jobs. Seventy percent of new jobs in America are created by small business owners. Isn't that an interesting fact? I mean, it's one of the things that makes the economy so vital. Most small businesses pay tax at the individual income tax level. Therefore, if you raise taxes on the so-called rich, you're really raising taxes on the job creators. And if the goal is private sector growth, you got to recognize that the best way to create that growth is to leave capital in the treasuries of the job creators. Uh, secondly, uh, if you raise taxes, in other words, if you let the, I wish they weren't called the Bush tax cuts. If they're called some other body's tax cuts, they're probably less likely to, to be raised. <laughs> but if you raise, the, if you raise taxes, you're taking money out of the pockets of consumers. And it's important for policymakers to recognize that all the doubt about taxes causes capital to stay on the sidelines. Uncertainty means the capital, the fuel for private sector growth, simply won't move. 